Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where today will be our TBR takedown for the month of March. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is this game I've been playing, trying to get my physical on red shelf down from a really high number down to something more manageable. I have updated it a little bit for 2023. I now will be keeping track of my backlist TBR, um, which I have a goal for to reach every month. And if I don't reach that goal, I have to unhaul until I get there from my backlist TBR. And I'm also keeping track of my current TBR, which is books that I've bought in 2023. I don't really have a challenge for that. I just kind of want to know where I'm at. Uh, to keep myself from going way out of bounds, I also have added in a TBR jar where I have to pull a book from here and read that um, during the month as well. So this month I did not make good notes about, uh, typically I go through everything chronologically, but I had COVID this month. I had a stomach bug this month. I did not do well with keeping track of things chronologically. Um, so we're going to go through first the books that I read and then the books that I hauled. And then we'll just figure out where we end up at from there. So first I'm going to slide over here so that we can ba -da -ba -da have a thing. Uh, but let's move on, shall we? My goal for March for my backlist TBR was 64 books. And we're starting out at 67 because I gave myself an extra book in February, which is fantastic. I don't have to read as many. So let's go through the books that I read. I read Almond by Won Pyong Song, and this comes off of the current TBR. Also off of the current TBR are Firefight and Calamity. Calamity and Firefight, if you will. Um, these are both off of the current TBR as well. From my backlist TBR, I have Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. Also from the backlist TBR, we have Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the second book in the Legendborn cycle. And The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. If you want to know my full thoughts about those, I don't do the wrap up in this part. I have a separate wrap up video. In that video, I do talk about the first three books that we that I mentioned, but this last set of three books that I mentioned um, are going to be coming up in a vlog video later this month. Now let's go over the books that I hauled and then we'll get to uh, this thing. So first we have my book club book for Wheatberry Books, which is my local bookstore. And we are reading The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. This is, I believe, post-apocalyptic and the main character is like in a cabin in the woods. And while she's there, this weird wall gets erected and she's cut off from everything around her. Um, I believe this one is Austrian. Our thing this year is we're reading all translated novels. I am very interested to get into this one and see what this cow has to do with the wall. Also at my local bookstore this month there was an author event for Mindy McGinnis and her newest book A Long Stretch of Bad Days. So naturally I picked that up and got a signed copy um, from Mindy who was wonderful and lovely and chatted to us for a long time. I'm trying to open it up so I can show you that it's signed. See? Uh, there were very few people at the event. I live in a very small town, um, but Mindy was kind enough to stop and talk to us. So we talked to her for like two hours and there were five of us. So um, I got to talk to her a lot, basically. Um, a Long Stretch of Bad Days is about two girls who are trying to pass history class and in order to do so they take on this uh, project, like a school project, but they end up turning, I think one of the girls runs a podcast. So they are uh, doing a podcast on this event that happened um, in the town's past where there was like a tornado and a flood and the town's only murder all happened within a short stretch of few days, hence the title. And they are trying to solve this murder that was never solved. And there's another girl that went missing during that time who was on the list of missing, but was never listed as having been found alive or dead. So they're trying to figure out what happened to this girl and why no one has been looking for her. I really like this line on the back of the book, um, you know, talking about like missing girls. It's just this thing on the back between our two main characters, Lydia and Bristol. And it says, what do you think? She asks, jerking her chin toward the library. I think it's messed up, I admit, as she leans against her car. 
but I don't know if there's any wrongdoing exactly. It makes me think about something my dad said last night. What's that? He said occasionally things get missed even when everyone involved has the best intentions. Sometimes people fall through the cracks. Funny thing about those cracks, Bristol says. Most of them are teenage girl shaped. Um, if you don't know, Mindy tends to write uh, more dark, uh, very heavy kind of books. Uh, her most famous book that you've probably heard of is Female of the Species. I have read A Madness So Discreet. Very excited to read through this. Honestly, talking to her, I want to just read her entire backlog of books. Um, I was going to do that this month, but then I got sick again. Um, so I don't think that's happening this month, but it's on my list. I, I might add those to like a monthly along with my Brandon Sanderson uh, because I'm very interested to read her backlist. Uh, books that don't count. Mitosis by Brandon Sanderson. I already read this, so it doesn't go on the current TBR. Also, I already read Witchlings by Clarabel A. Ortega. This is one of my favorite books. My favorite mid-grades of all time. It was my perfect book last year. I got a 5.25 out of 5 stars. It was not my favorite book of the year, which is weird, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes, you know? Uh, your favorite book and the highest rated book are not always necessarily the same. I waited for this to come out in paperback because I prefer my mid-grades in paperback. Um, so I have been waiting for this baby to come out. Uh, I did pre-order the second book on audio. So I will have a copy of that coming um, when it comes out very soon. This is essentially like a, a modern day Harry Potter kind of sort of thing. There's covens, you get sorted into different covens, and there's tests on the internet that you can take. I am Moth House. Um, very excited about that. Uh, and it just follows our three young protagonists who are trying to find their way in the world and defeat all of the evil. And I also got the UK edition of The Luminaries by Susan Zennard because I mean... She's beauty, she's grace, she's gorgeous. Um, so I got the paperback UK edition. Do I own 53 copies of this book now? Possibly. I don't own as many of this as I do of Truth Witch, but that's a whole other problem for a whole other Jessica. Also, this doesn't count because I've read it, obviously. I then have one book from Book of the Month, and that is The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I don't know what this is about, but it's a mystery thriller. It's by Sally Hepworth, who I've read from before and enjoyed. And this is typically what I use my book of the month credits for is mystery thrillers. Um, because they're the ones that I don't mind that they're in a giant book that's a different shape and that they don't have covers that match. Because uh, I'm not trying to like make a series fit because they're mystery thrillers and rarely are there series of those. So the next one is a chunky baby. I also picked this up at Wheatberry Books and it is On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. So this book was inspired by um, six missing women. Um, it says six women, mothers, daughters, sisters gone missing, inspired by the unsolved murders of the Chillicothe Six. This harrowing and haunting novel tells the story of two sisters, both of whom could be the next victims. Um, if you know, I am from Chillicothe and we did have uh, several years ago just this random rash of women who had gone missing um, or had been found murdered after having gone missing. Uh, only one of them has been solved and I think um, convicted, but it doesn't appear that that guy was involved with some of the other crimes. Um, there's like a Discovery Channel drama. There's like Investigation Discovery has done uh, a couple of different things. Like it's kind of a big deal in our area. Um, so the author of this book is from, I believe, Circleville, which is a town about uh, 30 miles north of Chillicothe. And so she is familiar with the area, but I have heard that it, like some of her like descriptors of like locations of things doesn't isn't accurate but that's outside of the point but I am interested to see this I'm not happy about their names which are Arcade and Daffodil someone that I talked to about the book was like I don't think I can read it because the names are not uh fun um and they'll make you crazy so I'm, I'm interested to see what this is as far as like with the connection of the stories that I know and that I've heard um this Thing is heavy and it has deckled edges which I hate so uh and the last two are kind of with a caveat I got these from 
Illumicrate maybe. Uh, I'm not very interested in either of them and I probably won't keep them. I'll probably just like immediately open them, read the first chapter and decide if I'm going to keep them. I don't think I'm going to. The first one is Song of Silver Flame Like Night. Uh, you probably can't see it because it's still in the plastic wrap. Uh, this is by Emily Winsau. Um, it's gorgeous. It's got painted edges. Um, it's very pretty, uh, but it doesn't sound like something that I would like. More so this one than the other. I would read that one before I would read this other one, I think. Um, the Red Scholar's Wake by Aliette de Bodard, I believe. As you know, I don't really look up how to say their names until I read the book. Um, it's got, again, gorgeous sprayed edges. Um, still in plastic. I'm not interested in this at all. So those two will probably be going, um, but it would be disingenuous to pretend like they are not currently on my current TBR because they are in my house and unread. So I think that puts my backlist TBR to 64, which is what our goal was. So yay me. And my current TBR to 28. I could be wrong. You know, the numbers are there. So like you can look and tell me, but it's not going to do you or me any good. Okay. So let's talk about this guy. Last month I pulled The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. It was the book I had to read. And if I didn't read it, then I had to unhaul it. That was the deal. I did start reading it before the end of the month. I got about 40% in before the end of the month. Um, I did not unhaul it. I finished reading it. I am done with it now. Um, but I feel like that's kind of where I'm going to be at on these because I am picking them like, I mean, today's the 10th. I think the last one I filmed the first or second week of March as well. And then again, I had COVID and I had a stomach bug. So like, I feel like as long as I have read them by the TBR takedown where I'm pulling the next one, I'm fine. Um, I'm, I will be trying to read them in the month of however. Um, but that one just took me a long time to read. Uh, so I did start it in the month of March. I just hadn't finished it in March. Um, I'm not going to let that fly if like I just read one page before the end of the month. But I, if I'm making like a, a valiant effort, then I'll accept it. Um, so we're going to shake these babies up and see what book I'm going to torture myself with this month. Because as I said last month when I was pulling these, a lot of the books that are on my shelf, I currently have videos planned for. So if I pull one that I have a video planned for, that means that I have to then somehow figure out how to get that video into the month. So, you know, it should be fun, right? I'm gonna do some of this. Do, 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 do. The little shrimpy papers. And I think we're gonna go with this one. Make sure it's only one. It is only one. And we got Ash Princess, which is by, uh, who is that book by? Laura Sebastian. That's it. Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. So I have to have read that by the end of the month and or the next TBR takedown. Or she goes, I think that one I haven't even done a try a chapter for. I think she's just been like chilling. I guess I could show you the paper too. That would be nice of me so that you don't, so that you know I'm legit. Ash Princess. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to try to read this month and see how that goes. So that's it. That's all I've got. That's the entire TBR takedown. Again, if you want to see the wrap up of the books we talked about at the beginning, that's linked down below. Um, if you want to think I should prioritize any of the books that I hauled this month, let me know that because I would love to prioritize those for you to give you a review for them. Um, cause I like helping you guys find new favorite books. That's legitimately why I'm here. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, leave me a purple emoji in the comments below. Anything purple will do. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.